Hey guys, welcome back to another video. This is Motivation for Young Christians. Welcome back, welcome back. Today, our topic will be being a Christian rapper. This is a part two video. Today, you're watching part one. Part two will be coming out next week. Today, we're going to be interviewing two Christian rappers coming out of the street of Guyana. And I'll be asking them three questions. And next week, we're going to ask the other two questions to better understand what it's like being a Christian rapper and to educate the young Christians that are aspiring to become rappers. Today, we have our guest here. Please introduce yourself by stating your name, your rapper name, where you're from, and how long you have been doing music. All right, so I'll go first. Uh, my name is Rundell Holder, stage name DC, that's D-I-S-I. -I. I've been doing music for about like nine years now. Uh, it's been a journey, but glad to be on it. Glad to be doing something uh, that's pleasing to the Lord. You know what I mean? Yeah. Hi. <clears throat> so my name is Onassis Roberts. Um, I go by the alias Valen. Uh, I've been doing music since about seven years old. Uh, like just randomly, you know, coming up with freestyles and these things. But um, I've been recording professionally since 2012. So that but that about sums it up. Yes, just two amazing people that have been doing their craft for long and just using their faith into their music and just really putting out positivity. Uh, the information to their music will be below in the description. Please check out the Lemon Pepper Freestyle and 1000. All the information will be right below. But right now, we're going to begin straight into the question for today. Our first question for today is, at what age did you start rapping and who were some of your influence then and now? All right, I'll go. So I started rapping when I was, um, as I said before, um, at seven years old, around the time, uh, yeah, around that time I was introduced to like wrestling and um, I, I used to watch John Cena a lot, right? But uh, I, would, I would watch him do his thing and like I would, believe that he was actually freestyling that he did but I found out later it was scripted but since about that age I would play with these action figures and I would freestyle and make up rhymes and 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 that's where I could remember it starting from there and uh, my my influences are rappers like uh, Tupac and Biggie obviously because I like rap music or uh, and then uh, surprisingly, it wasn't just rappers that I liked. I liked people like, uh, there's a singer by the name of uh, Colby, Kaliyat, all of these people helped me understand the writing process and how to look at music. And, and even underground rappers like Blue and Exile, you know what I mean? It, and, and not just to stay all secular, but on the Christian aspect, you no, know, uh, we were introduced to guys like Lecrae, uh, uh, you know, because I would become a Christian at the age of 13. And then I started to heavily listen to people like Lecrae. And then there was the whole Rich, the whole Rich uh, Records label with people like Show Baraka. And at that time, there was this guy named Jahazel as well, as well that I liked a lot. But yeah, those basically were my influences. All right. So for me, I um, started rapping just around when I was 13. That's when I actually put pen to paper before it was just a lot of musical influences. I remember uh, the first person I listened to and like I was encouraged to write lines is Papa Sun. Like I had an uncle, he was real deep into Papa Sun music. And so when a new song come out from Papa Sun, we used to listen to it and write the lines down and then try to do it like him. If you don't know who Papa Sun is, then you got to check him out. Probably one of the first Jamaican gospel uh dance artist or gospel reggae if you want to call it that but yeah man papa son was a, a heavy influence to me when i was younger and then i was listening to 50 cents at that time around that time um well earlier than that eminem had came out probably when i was like six or seven my uncle before he he became a christian he was deep into you know the hip-hop culture we used to watch bet 106 and park all the time um, if you don't know what 106 and Park is, you might want to do some research there too. But it, it's, it's like a lot of, of uh, a melting pot of different things, man. Uh, 50 Cent's the whole get rich or die trying kind of vibe. Eminem with Slim Shady, um, 8 Mile, the movie, uh, some of the studio albums, um, 
the uh, slim the slim ep that kind of thing that's where like i got exposed to hip hop um when i came into high school is when um they introduced me to christian hip hop artists like flame and the cray and um for a long time as a child i was really searching for like a way to express my creative abilities but please god at the same time and so i you know christian hip hop really was that avenue for me to be as creative as possible but at the same time please god to the fullest without feeling like i'm doing something wrong or i have to hide to listen to it or sneak behind you know granny cupboard spit a few lines or something you know like it was really liberating and so yeah man that's that's what really pushed me uh no like in my influences no um I listen to a lot of dancehall, dancehall music. Uh the like a lot of the artists that are trending now. Um I don't I don't really know any Christian dancehall artists like from Jamaica. We have some from Trinidad that do stuff. I would say um Farnight, Farnight, uh, Nathaniel, uh Jazzy and those guys in terms of Christian secular I mean everybody's kind of you to Skilly Bang and like listening to what he's doing and you know you got the Popcorn you have the um who else who else who else no other artists come to mind but yeah that's that's how it is right now in terms of music and hip hop and then to know influences people that I pay attention to amazing amazing response fun the fact about me I actually started I started doing music I think 13 14 And I think after 15 I pretty much got my pen and just left that alone and just focused more on doing YouTube. But with the same thing grew up on reggae, dancehall and then gospel, uh, a lot of similarity to the artists that they grew up with. Uh, I grew up with the same thing too. Now we're going to try a second question for today. What are some of the obstacles you have faced during your journey of becoming a rapper? Well, um <laughs> if it's like really love on pepper freestyle, that was kind of like me venting on it. But um the biggest problem is sometimes I would have felt that I was born in the wrong country <laughs> for some reason at all because uh you know it's hard uh from a perspective that isn't watered down because I know rap for what a rap was and and what it is you know I I came from a from a background of rap music where it was more poetic and storytelling and and you could have been as deep as possible like for example this at the other day I was I was watching an interview on where Eminem was expressing how in his time of doing rap music if you were not different or differentiated from everybody you were considered lame you understand so i came up with that kind of uh tenacity in 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 in, in music and and it's hard for me to like drop that because because of where i live So and and I could tell you me and DC we we started recording professionally around the same time and we took years behind perfecting um the accent you know well well we thought we perfected it but still it was still some amount of different you know it, it would still be different to people that actually spoke the american accent or what's not right but the biggest struggle was that um that even though i would do it i had to find myself in a place where i had to dumb it down or recently i had to evolve to a place of doing music where i even got sing now because people uh want to relate you know dc found it easier than me because dc was more versatile thank god for that for him right but for me my biggest struggle was having to dumb down certain things and not being so deep all my friends normally tell me that I'm the deep the deep rapper you know instead of saying that there was water under a bridge i would go and use some different poetic way and they would trouble me but that was the hardest the hardest thing about about me doing music in guyana or, or doing it currently but i found the, the answer to it and i realized that you know what sometimes i got to come out my comfort zone to achieve the goal which is to minister true music to people under whatever condition I got to you know what I mean it's like Paul said I I will be whatever I need to be for Christ so I found a way to 
do this kind of Afro rap kind of thing where I use a lot of melodies. If people relate to that more, then, yo, I got to give them what they want. But sometimes it's hard, uh, you know, it's hard doing that when, when I come from the authentic place of doing rap for rap, you know. But um, just me being real. But, um, yeah, that was the hardest thing that I faced so far, you know. And to be truthful as well, the consistency. Because sometimes uh, when you do music, you want things to hit every single song that you drop. But you don't always get that response. And then I'm a Christian artist as well. I don't buckle for nothing. I keep it Christian all the time. You know what I mean? And the fact that I do that, and, and my songs are not leaning towards the conscious kind of sense where, you know, some people like to do this general consciousness thing. When you do that, people tend to, oh, oh I relate to him. But I particularly talk about Christ and in particular talk about my testimonies and, and, and the word of God. So people, people find it hard sometimes to, to bang to that. But so it was hard for me to remain consistent not getting the kind of reaction that I was expecting with every song. But thanks be to God, you know, it, it has been since 2020 to now, have been growing exceptional in terms of like responses from people. And, and I'm just grateful for that. But those are the two tough things for me. All right. So for me, uh, challenges, acceptance, acceptance. I remember when I started rapping, like everyone was like, Wait, were you rapping for like, don't do the, as Valen said, I've always been able to sing. I used to lead worship in church for a greater part of my teens. Um, so everyone kind of expected me to do like a worship album. But really, uh, worship, like going to the studio and doing worship music, it, it just never clicked for me. Like it just never happened. Like, like the presence of God wasn't there. Like I never felt like, I'm being led to do this thing. It also like, like I'm just trying too hard. And if if you know anything about creatives, you know when you're trying too hard, that's time to stop doing what you're doing and come come with it another way. So like the first, firstly for me was acceptance. I remember one time I was sharing my song in church with some of the um, brethren there, and the guy said to me, he said, "I don't think this is pleasing to the Lord." You know, the Bible says that we should bring. Uh, praises and hymns and, and songs of and psalms and I don't think that's a hymn or a psalm and you know they really laughed at me they really laughed at me they really laughed at me I really felt bad about it but for me as Valen said the tenacity the, the drive to just keep going keep going keep going keep going like I knew that this is something that God wanted me to do like this is I need to do this music like I need to do it in this way because this is the, the way for me that was like most effective, the, the best way to deliver the message of Christ, deliver the message of the gospel, to have people understand who Jesus is and, you know, how he can transform their lives and, you know, how he is there, even in the tightest of situations or the worst of situations, like just, just lean on Christ and, you know, he going he gonna to really come true. And so over the years, there have been good responses and there have been like bad responses, but because I know that God is with me, I'm able to overcome the challenge of acceptance. As the years progress, music started to evolve. So for myself, I really had to adapt different things. Like um, if you listen to 1000 and then you go and listen to a song of mine from like three years ago, you'll hear the difference. Three years ago, I was just trying to rap strictly in an American accent. But now I'm trying to, as much as possible, integrate Guyanese slangs and Guyanese uh, cadences into it just so that it, it sounds different, one, but also it's still true to hip hop, if you know what I mean. Like the flow is still there. Like it's not popping in and out of the tracks unnecessarily. Like it's, it's tight, it's relatable, it's Guyanese, and it's 150% God inspired god-based music like things that uh the bible talks about things that if the lord pick up go if the lord had a, a cell phone and he go on spotify and he just listened to one of my songs then he would be pleased like yeah 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 this is this is music from one of my sons like so for me for me the challenge sometimes is to really adjust and adapt to uh the kind and the types of music that 
people like. But as Valen said earlier, Paul said, I become all things to all men so that some might be saved. So while that's a challenge, I, I feel like, you know, doing a pretty good job of handling that. So those are two things. Thirdly would be, uh, I would say, monetary support, like the financial backing. I mean, Guyanese and Guyana doing hip hop. When everywhere you look, there is soca and dancehall and reggae. And so like nobody wants to put money behind a rapper. And so, so you know, sometimes that can be a challenge. But I believe that things are going to change, man. We just got to keep pushing. We are fortunate enough to be like pioneers of this thing mm -hmm. and to just keep it authentic, ensure that Christ is always in it, to always work on our craft and make things as sonically pleasing as possible. Yeah, that's that's the motive, man. That's that's how we do it. Manassas, I feel like you wanted to touch on the um part where you're talking about the financial support. You if you want, you can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> The money, <laughs> the money is, is, is another is another thing. Uh, the reason why I tend to like overlook it, right, is because I've always been the type of Christian that believe in um, giving from myself, like whatever I have. And I've always been in a position, thank God, that God has put me in a position where I always had access to funds, you know, not from people or anything. I just pour my resources but it becomes a harder reality or a harsher reality because I'm married now and I'm no longer living under my mother roof. So I got to be careful with how much I invested. I invested so much in, in advertising and pushing my music last year so much that I got banned from Facebook, being real, right? Um, and and it, was, it was like an error mistake, but I took it as a, as a, as a, as a sign or, 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 or like a, a little hold back from God, like, yo, slow down. You spend, you're spending way too much money on advertising. Like the, the music will reach to them. You know what I mean? And, and, and I, I just said, you know, I can just relax, but keep being consistent. But yo, it's a lot of money because they're, they're producers that need to be paid. They're, um, they're beef, beats that need to be leased. And I, I, I stopped stealing people's stuff from the time I decided like, yo, I'm never going to stop doing music again. I made it clear that I would stop using uh, bootlegged software and these things because it's like, it's like you got to put forth what you want to see. You know what I mean? So I, I started to lease beats and I would put aside money. I bought things that could facilitate me doing my own videos, all of these things, you know? So that's another challenge if I'm being realistic, but yo, God always, um, Provide, eh? True. God, God always provide. And just to relate on a YouTube base with the money thing, yeah, I had to, I had to put my money where my mouth is with, with my craft. I, I had to um, invest money, but thank God. Uh, I had two people around me that was able to bless me. Like the setup that I have right now with the, um, the, this mic, the whole setup with the, um, with, with this and all of that. I got blessed. So half of the money was paid by me and the other half was paid by somebody else. So sometimes God bless you with other people and then you could think your money too. So like the financial part, it's, it, it's hard sometimes, especially like with me. I don't have a job. <laughs> so <laughs> that money thing was really, was really on me. I had to make sure I do my saving up. But thank you so much for the Lord for having that person that was able to cover that half because now I'm able to use this. But the financial part, Whatever you want to do, save your money up, save your money up, and just continue to have faith in God. Because maybe someday somebody will be like, you know what? I'm going to give you this little, little money. Handle that. And do what you got to do with it. So to God be the glory. Yeah, if I could just touch back on that again. Um, people people even stepped in for me as well. Um, especially this year. Uh, I really, really, really had to take a break from music just to get some things in order. And then when I was trying to come back, like there was no, like I didn't have the finances and the resources to get it done. And then, you know, God just used people to really pour in, pour in resources. And, you know, that's one of the main reasons I was able to put out the record 1000 and like really get some things going and stuff like that. So yeah, man, I believe that the Bible, the Bible says it all, man, that your gifts will make room for you and bring you before great men. 
And so I feel like if it's a God-given thing that he is going to help you find the resources to get it done. But you got to be smart with it as well. You got to make sure you're diligent, you're prudent, you're doing what you can. So. Yes, amen, amen. Now we move into the third question for today. How important was it for you to incorporate your faith into your music? All right. Um, so I, I, I told you, I've been rapping since I was seven, right? Around the age of um, about 13 years or somewhere where, where I went into the eighth grade, you know, in Guyana, we say um, second form. Uh, I had a friend. Uh, he wasn't a Christian. I wasn't in the Christian thing around that time. Um, uh, we did we did secular freestyles. I had this little Canon camera, and and I was so enthused about uh, recording my first album, and you know, and around that time Drake was my heaviest influence, right? And um, we went and we found this studio where this guy uh, I can't remember his name. I think his name was I can't remember his name right now, but he was like a popping producing guy at that time. Well, one of them. And uh, the whole thing was he listened to our tape and he was like, nah, man, I don't think, I don't think you are ready. I'm not going to work with y'all, but I think y'all should practice. And I was like, I was depressed about it. It hit me. I was discouraged. And, and I just rest the whole rap thing down. I continued to write poems and, and copy lyrics from other rappers and try to follow their structure. And years would just keep, Years would just go by where, you know, I, I still rap, but not trying to put out music, you know. But then God used a guy named um, Carlisle, same, same guy that would carry me and DC to studio for the first time, right? And from that time, he carried us. Um, around that time, we had just come back from camp, I believe. And we, when we came out from, every time we came out from church camp, we would always be fired up, you know what I mean? So even if you had, you had, you had wave wavering before, when you go camp, you used to straighten it up. So after we was taken there, we all we wanted to pin was Christian stuff. And I made a, a, like a promise to myself around that time. I said, you know what? I'm going to never do secular music ever as, as an artist. And so long as I'm going to be on a studio mic, it always has to go glorify God. And I made that promise in my heart and to myself. And since then, God has um, used me greatly. Like, like I, I started to get somewhat of a name and, 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 and repetition in the Christian, uh, uh, the Christian arena. So I stick to it, you know, no matter what. That's how important it is. I remember that mostly. I, I, I'm not going to try and, you know, downplay it and say, oh, well, because I'm Christian, automatically it was... It was something that I thought to do. No, uh, there are a lot of people out there that claim to be Christians or, or are Christians and they are not Christian artists. You know what I mean? That's between them and God. But for me, that was the reason why my faith had to be placed into my music because I made a, a promise to myself and God. And that's probably the only promise that I've ever kept, you know, being real. And I will continue to keep that because God has took me places you know, with my dream and he's going to continue to take me places. So that's, that's, that's how putting my faith became important, you know, in, in this music thing. So for me, um, music is an expression of self. And for as long as I could remember, I've always, I've always loved the Lord. I can't remember a time in my life where like I wasn't trying to please him or I wasn't uh, doing you know, doing the things that I thought, you know, would be pleasing unto him. Yeah, I had my struggles and setbacks, uh, some repetitive sins, things that I really had to deal with and get deliverance from. But for the most part, my faith was in everything that I did. Like the core of my being was faith-based. Um, through high school, if you ask any one of my friends, they, yeah, 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 run up, charge by, charge by. And so like, Putting my faith in my music was a no-brainer. Like it was something that I felt like, like one goes with the other. Like like uh, a PB and J sandwich, you know, the peanut butter and the jelly goes together with the bread. I mean, that's the only way to have a PB and J sandwich. For me, the only way for me to do music was to 
have it faith based. I did try at one occasion to write a song without it being faith based, and man, it was whack. It was it was it was stupid. It was. Man, it was corny, it was cringe. Like, it, it just didn't work. Like, it, man, me without Christ don't make no sense. Honestly, I, I kid you not. Me without Christ don't make no sense. And so for me, the music always has to be face based, be, be, you know, as I said before, music is an expression of yourself. Um, in my younger days, I used to put in a lot of time with reading the word. And so if you listen to my music now, even when I don't want to, scripture comes out, like the Bible comes out, like biblical principles come out because that's what I really used to feed myself on. And so like, again, I can't do music without, without putting my faith in it. Importance of it, I mean, the Great Commission, people must hear the gospel. They must hear about Jesus Christ. They must hear the good news, you know, what he did. And how his dying on the cross is, you know, the solution to a lot of things that we go through physically, mentally, emotionally. And, and that's, that's always been another one of my driving forces. Just to ensure that God is pleased and that he is well represented. Because I think for a lot, a lot, a lot of times um, people try to play down gospel music or say that gospel music isn't cool. Is it, it isn't this, it isn't that. I think for a long time as believers, we always thought that once we're talking about God, it's good. And we keep forgetting the, the importance of excellence and quality and, and production and that kind of thing. And so for me, man, I'm just trying to prove God. I'm just trying to prove God in the music. I'm just trying to prove to people that Christian music is dope. It's not something that you put aside and that you, you know, only use on a Sunday morning or when you're feeling depressed. Like this, this is music you can play 24 seven. Like we have music touching on everything. And so like, man, I'm just really on a mission to, for Christ to be known. Yeah. And I love that. I love that. Boy, you have on that mission to let the word of God be here through your music because um, one thing that I always preach is that whatever gift or talent that you have, you can use it for the Lord because the Lord gave it to you. So it was intended to be used for him. And to relate what you were saying, Rondell, um, with me being a preacher and a motivational speaker, I'm able to do that when I don't want to. <laughs> like I, I end up coming up with sermon in my head. I end up preaching when I'm not even purposely trying to preach. I end up getting some motivational quote when I'm not trying to do motivation speaking, but it's, a, it's what the gift that God has blessed me with. And I just continue to use it. So thank the Lord so much for that. And just thank y'all for your response. Right, thank you guys so much for your response. Thank you so much, Onassis Rondell, also known as DC. Onassis, also known as Valent. Thank you guys so much for being a part of this video. Make sure that you check out their latest song. Check out the Lemon Pepper Freestyle. Check out 1000. Their info will be in the description below. A big shout out to Guy and a big shout out to the, all the rappers, the gospel rapper. Big shout out to everybody, you know, GT for life. Uh, if you haven't already, please like the video. Subscribe if you're new. Turn on your post notification. This is Motivation for Young Christian. I'll see you guys next week for part two of the video. <laughs>